is it then? And I think by listening to this sound, it's St. Paul's Cathedral. Yes, well done, well done, you are. The memories John and Lynn share are all the more precious because in 2005, serious illness brought the organ playing to a halt once more. He had an illness called endocarditis, which is bacteria in the blood, which had gone through his system and had eaten the valve of his heart, travelled from his heart up behind his eye, had eaten behind the eye and was heading for the brain. And those doctors said on two occasions, I don't think he's going to survive. At that time, we didn't share it with you, did we? But we came through because of the wonderful service and the treatment we had. It worked, he was saved. Now fully recovered, John's ready to take on the cathedrals once more. Playing in Manchester Cathedral in a few weeks' time, that'll be my first cathedral since my operation. So that's a tremendous step forward again. So after a break of almost 10 years, next week we'll find out how John copes playing Manchester Cathedral's organ, number 75 on his list of 94. Eddie Reader is probably best known as the lead singer of the band Fairground Attraction, but it's her love of hymns from her childhood which helped her discover her faith and her passion for music. This is the church I got married in. It's the local church. It's really small and I like that it's this little peaceful oasis in the mad old outside. Sometimes if it's empty, I'll do a little bit of singing. When I was three or two, I remember we used to go to a little uh, chapel near us. We used to walk there. It was always kind of like this sense of importance. I got dressed up. I kind of fell in love with the music, some of the hymns, that I heard, Sweetheart of Jesus, Soul of my Saviour, Hail Queen of Heaven, the ocean star, Guide of the wanderer here below, thrown on life's search, we claim thy care. I 
fell in love with those songs. I heard the comfort in them. It just made me feel like there was something magical and um, charismatic going on. Pray for me. That's when my relationship started with God. When I was 10, 11, 12, uh, that was my kind of feeling that I was looked after and loved. When I'm praying, I always pray before I go on stage, I always say, Our Father. I pray to be connected and to maintain that connection. When I focus on prayer, I end up um, attracting to myself a better way of behaviour. I like the Psalms, of course. I love reading the Psalms. I go immediately to Psalm 27. It's my favourite. God is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? It's so powerful. I will sing, I will sing praises unto the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. To sing in his temple all the days of my life, it's kind of a, it's, a, it's, it's my little vow. Today we come, thy blessing to implore. Oh, touch our hearts, so cold and so ungrateful, and make us all thine own forevermore. Sweet Abide With Me is one of the nation's best-loved hymns and it's been sung at virtually every FA Cup final. With the fourth round of the competition due to take place this week, Dan Walker has been unravelling a unique piece of music history. The FA Cup has already provided some amazing memories this season. We've seen the joy, we have seen the heartache. But for those fortunate enough to be wandering down Wembley Way on the day of the final itself, one of the abiding memories will be singing a very famous hymn.
For many fans, the greatest FA Cup final of them all took place back in 1953. Look at the speed of that man, and they say he's slow. It's Stanley Mortensen. They've got the score wrong, they've put it four each. Good graces, but well, that's just how exciting it's been. Eager to share their personal memories of that day are Sir Stanley's daughter, Jean, and the Match of the Day commentator, John Moxon. Well, Jean, May the 2nd, 1953. I was a young boy uh, living with my parents in Lewisham in South East London. My father was the Methodist minister at the Deptford Mission, yes. and uh, I was taken to see the cup final on, on a neighbour's nine-inch black-and-white television. That was luxury, now, wasn't it? Well, oh, lovely. where were you, G? I was here. Right. There he is, Matthews. The hymn Abide With Me. Right. Do you remember them singing that on that day? I remember them singing it that day, and every time I heard it every, ever since, and it always brings back that Wembley day. And what a great final this has been. One year I was doing the commentary here in the cup final in, I think it was the late 70s, and I actually mentioned the name of the writer of the hymn. I think it was Henry Francis Light, was it? And I said, it's number some so-and-so, so-and-so in the Methodist hymn book. Yes, and yes. somebody said to me after the cup final, what makes you think it's only in the Methodist hymn book? It's in every <laughs> hymn book.